Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris, this is my shop partner Oots, and in this video I'm going to be building four really cool little woodworking projects that are great to give as gifts. I want to also thank Lowe's for sponsoring this video, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm throwing in a bonus gift just for you guys. So, let's get started. So the first gift we're going to make is this little puzzle. It's a little wooden cube that has colored blocks, they're different sizes, and when it's solved, it's in a nice little square, just like this. And then you can kind of pull it apart. And it's just kind of fun to play with. It kind of morphs and spins inside and shuffles itself up. And then you have to kind of spin it back in place. And well, you get the idea. I'm going to use a three quarter inch piece of popper for this build and start by ripping a one and a half inch wide strip and then a three quarter inch wide strip. Then I'll set up stop blocks on my cross cut sled again at one and a half inches and then three quarters of an inch. I'll need three of the bigger square pieces, six of the longer rectangular pieces and three of the small square pieces. I'm going to end up making several of these cubes as gifts, that's why you're seeing more than what I just mentioned. Next I'm going to make a quick jig to help me line up and drill holes in each piece. Each piece needs to be drilled in a certain way and I'll show that a little bit later on, but I just glue down a couple of scrap pieces with CA glue and I'll instantly cure those with a shot of activator. I like to use a drill press for this because I can set the depth stop so that my two holes will meet in the middle. All right, so you need to drill these holes in these pieces in a certain way to make this thing work. One of the square pieces you drill in two of the faces opposite of each other so that they meet in the back corner. The other two square pieces you drill one in the top and one in an edge like that. And those two are the same. One of these longer pieces, there'll be a hole that is drilled in two adjacent faces that meet in the middle. And four of the longer pieces there will be a hole drilled in one face and a hole drilled through the end that comes all the way down and meets that face. And then the square ones, the little tiny guys, just two adjacent faces. So don't drill all the way through, just any two adjacent faces. All right, so we're going to put this together, but it has to go in a certain order. So I wanted to show you real quick the order of operations. We're starting with the blue one. The blue one has a hole on the side and a hole on the top. The next one has a hole on the side, a hole on the end. The next green one is just a regular little square, doesn't really matter. The next one is a hole in the end, a hole on the side. The next one is two adjacent holes on the side. Hole on the top, hole on the side. Hole on the side, hole on the end. Regular little square. This last one is two of the holes on opposite faces. Next one is a hole, two adjacent holes on the sides a hole on a face, a hole on the end, and then a regular little square. So I found this elastic cord. I wanted to find something a little more heavy duty, but this is the best I could find. I found it at one of my local craft stores. I'm just gonna double it up and pull it really nice and tight and hopefully it works well. I forgot to mention that I painted these with watercolors and then I coated them with a semi-gloss Minwax polyurethane. I didn't get the colors spot on like on the original, but I still think it looks good enough and a pair of tweezers works great for fishing that cord through. Then I pull the pieces on the cord as tight as possible without breaking it, and then I tie the two ends together, and I'm all done.
The next project I'm going to make is a little bathtub tray for my wife. I start with one and a half inch wide premium boards that I got from Lowe's and I can just cut those down to 28 inches long, which is the width of my bathtub. You could also take wider boards and rip those to whatever width you want too. For this project, I would recommend working off measurements from your own bathtub if you want it to fit right. Our tub has a four inch lip on one side and a one and a half inch lip on the other side. So I'm gonna screw my bottom cross members at those spots. When the tray is placed in the tub, the bottom cross members will then lock into the inside edge of the tub and it'll prevent it from falling in. I'm using quarter inch pieces of scrap to make some spacers. Then I'll mark and cut my cross members and screw and glue them into place. And if you like this video and you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll get notifications when I post future videos. So thanks so much for that. Next I'm going to make the book rest. The book rest will have six vertical slats that I cut at seven and three quarter inches. Then I'll use my cross cut sled on my table saw to make a three quarter inch long tenon on each board that is approximately a quarter inch thick so that when I secure them all together, the tenons on the book rest will fit into the gaps on the tray. Then I just ripped a couple half inch pieces that I'll use to secure that book rest. And I'm just using a clamp to kind of hold those pieces while I screw them together. Now I'm going to make a little insert that will prevent the book or tablet or phone from sliding down when it's leaning against that book rest. I'm essentially just taking two rip cuts through this one and a half inch board to create a piece that has a quarter inch rabbit that can drop into the gaps on the tray. Then I make two shorter versions of that and I'll just turn those on their side and secure those to the top by screwing through from the underside and those will be used to hold a wine glass. Then to finish the tray I went with the Minwax Spar Urethane because of its great durability against moisture. So I wanted to make this little bathtub tray modular so you could remove parts of it. Can't remove this, this is glued in, screwed down. But if you wanna have a book up there or your tablet, you can put this little piece in, it's a quarter inch to fit in the slot back there. And then also this little stopper piece that you can put in any one of these slots. And then you could throw your book up there and it'll hold it in place while you read. Or if you wanna have a meal if you like to eat in the tub, <laughs> then you could take these off and put your plate on there. So. <laughs> okay, so this next project is super easy. It's literally just two 45 degree cuts that are eight inches apart, and then a one and a quarter inch hole that's drilled five and seven eighths up from the bottom and just like that, you have one of those really cool balanced wine bottle holders. I've seen some of these floating around the internet and I thought they were really neat. I've always wanted to try making one, so looked up how to do it. It's super easy and will make a really good, quick gift for somebody.
Another technique I've always wanted to try is that shosugi ban, where you basically burn the wood and scrape off the char, and it leaves a really cool, nice, amber brown finish that's really durable, actually. They use it in a lot of outdoor furniture and siding, and it's an old, traditional Japanese method. And then you add a little bit of Danish oil, and it made a really nice finish. Thought it was a cool technique, for sure. Voila. There's no better way to display your beautiful bottle of wine than through a two by four. But actually, you can make these out of all sorts of cool things like uh, exotic woods, maybe a live edge piece. It doesn't have to be a two by four. The wider the base is, the more stable it's gonna be. But you can do it out of narrower pieces of wood. The possibilities are endless, so have fun with that. Just follow those dimensions and you'll be able to make all sorts of cool little super easy gifts. All right, now we're gonna make a nice little wine gift box. Now, Lowe's had a couple of oak boards that were already dimensioned, so these are half inch, and I have a quarter inch board for the lid. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, dovetail joinery on it, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut all my boards to their final length and width, and instead of trying to explain it all here, I'll just put those measurements down in the description. These boards are milled up really nice already, but I still wanted to take a couple passes with the hand plane to give them that ultra smooth finish. You could also touch them up with some sandpaper too if you wanted. I haven't cut any dovetails in a while, so I decided to challenge myself with those for this project. But this box could be joined together using box joints, miter joints, or even just butt joints with some glue and brads. The box will still look good and be plenty strong for what its purpose is, which is just holding a bottle of wine. So I lay out my dovetails on what are called the tail boards first. I like narrow, delicate looking dovetails, so I lay mine out to look like that, and using a Japanese pole saw, I'll do my best to cut right on the waist side of the line. Then I'll use my fret saw and chisels to get rid of the waste. Then using the tail boards and a marking knife, I can mark out my pins board. And again, I do my absolute best to cut just to the waist side of the line, leaving barely the line visible. And if I'm accurate here, I won't have to do any tuning with a chisel and I can get a nice tight joint just from the saw. Then using a router and clamping a fence on my bottom board, I'm gonna cut a rabbit that will then later on sit in a dado that I'll cut on the side and front and back pieces later on. But to save yourself this step, you could just use a quarter inch piece like I used on the top. I would probably do it that way next time. Now using a quarter inch spiral upcut bit, I'm gonna cut dados in the tops and bottoms of the box frame pieces so that the bottom can sit in and the top can slide into. I make sure that I don't go all the way through the cut and stay about a quarter inch away from each end so that it's not visible through the dovetails. Next I'll make the lid using a quarter inch thick piece. I'm first going to drill a three quarter inch finger hole that I can use to open and close the lid, then a small quarter inch hole that I'll use to embed a magnet in to help keep the lid closed. Then I'll drill a hole and add a magnet to the front piece before I assemble. Then I'll scratch the surfaces of the magnets with some sandpaper to help the glue grab and I'll use some CA glue and instantly bond it using a shot of activator.
Then I add some glue to the pins and assemble the box. I decided to add some finish to this box and I went with some Minwax Red Mahogany to try to give it a more aged, rich look and I'm definitely happy with the result. Well, I am super happy with how this little wine box came out and I think it's a great way to spruce up a somewhat ordinary gift. All right, so now for the final bonus gift. This is actually a gift to all of you and my wife. I'm gonna get rid of the mustache. Mm. <sighs> That's really ugly. <laughs> <laughs>